All right, if you've been following along on our videos, you know that we are just about done with the structure of this. We've got our outside all finished except for the roof. So this week, let's finish the roof and I'll show you how to put a plexiglass cover over the back opening so it'll protect it from little fingers and paws. So stay tuned and see how we do that. Alright, since our last video I've done a couple of things. I covered the back edges here with just some narrow, it's called quilling paper. It's narrow, just narrow black paper. It was just the right size and it just made a nice finished edge. And I've glued on the back roof panel. I did that the exact same way I did the front roof panel. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and look at that one. The other thing I did, since these houses always have a crack at the top. I just took an eighth inch dowel and I glued in there. We're going to cover that all up with our roofing, but we just need something to fill that hole so the roofing will hold up nice. So hold on and we'll get this all started. All right, so the next step, we need to cover these openings. We have cats at our house and my son's cat is, let's just say, really curious. So I need to have some way to keep him out of here. And in my library of dollhouse books, I have this one. I actually have two copies of this book. This is Barbara Warner's ABCs of Dollhouse Finishing. I actually bought her first edition when it first came out. And I, my copy was falling apart, so I recently ordered her new version. They're pretty much the same. So either copy, if, you, if you're going to get into dollhouse building, I do recommend this. But I got this idea for the back cover from this book. I've never done it before so we'll see how it works. So first I bought some pieces of strip wood. I bought some 3 8 inch by 8 inch and some 8 inch square and I glued them, where did I put it? I glued them together and then painted them. You can see there's the there's the 3 8 inch and then lined up on this edge is the 8 inch square. It makes a little track. Now what, for the first cover, I'm actually just going to line this up with the floor and glue it on. And when I get that done, see if you can see, do I have it aimed so you can see? I'm going to glue this on down here, lined up with the floor, and then the roof should hold the top of the plexiglass. For the covers, I just bought just some acrylic sheet, plexiglass sheet from Home Depot. It's back in the window department. I got two pieces, 11 by 14, because I needed to have, in order to have enough to cover both openings. So let me get this installed and the glue dry on it, and then we'll slide the first cover in and see how it works. All right, so here I'm putting the glue on. I said maybe I better show. I don't know. If, I think this is kind of self-explanatory, but since I'm learning and you're learning at the same time on this step, we'll do it together, I guess. So I'm just spreading. This is my fast grab tacky. A nice bead of that. Now I'm going to put a couple of drops of a super glue along here too. Because remember, if you layer your super glue with your tacky glue, you'll have an instant bond. And then you don't have to stand here and hold this for until the glue dries. Now we're going to line up this eighth inch square part with the floor. And that is really all there is to that step. Just make sure it's nice and straight with the floor. And that's, we just have to wait for the glue to dry now. And after the glue is dry, we'll come back and we'll slide that plexiglass panel in and then we'll figure out the piece for the roof. All right, this glue has dried now. So I need to get, and I've got the plastic kind of started to peel off. It's got a protective 
plastic covering on both sides of your plexiglass. So you peel that off. And toss it in the trash. And then we can just slide this in. And there. Now, this will be protected for my son's cat. Oh, we still see. So let's get the track put on for the top. Now for the top part, I'm going to, uh, let's see, how am I going to do this? I guess put it here. I pre-cut these so they're the length I want. I want them to come right with, even with the edge, and they're going to go up. And I'm going to put them on and then put my roofing up to them because I don't think I want to try and put my roof under them. So once again, I'm going to line them up. I'm going to line this edge up here with this opening. Do the same on the other side and get them glued together, glued on. And when it's dry, we'll see how the plastic fits. All right, now the glue is pretty much dry on this. The only thing else I did, following the directions in Barbara Warner's book, I took a drill and I drilled a hole. I marked an eighth inch up from the bottom here and I drilled a hole and I just put in that hole a little, it's a little finishing brad, like you would use in your real house, and put that through, and we'll slide our glass, there's one on each side, be sure you measure up the same distance on both sides, so that the, your glass will be held, your plexi will be held evenly, and then just gently put it down, those will stop it, and now it's got a clear, fin a clear cover, so it keeps out the kitty cat. All right, let me get this set to the side and I'll get out what we need to start doing the roofing. And then we'll be one step closer to being done. Now it's time to start our roofing. This is a roof system that I came up with oh a few a few bit miniature structures ago. I used it on my big Harrison and I really liked it, so I'm going to do it on this small building and like I've said before I don't have a miniature store that's convenient to me I mail order everything if I can't get it in the craft store and I didn't want to do that for this I wanted something inexpensive that looked modern to me the wood shingles are a problem because very few buildings where I live even have wood shingles everything is composition or asphalt roofing so what I did on that and I'm doing on this is I bought this is just 60 grit, 60 grit coarse sandpaper from the hardware store. See, that's all it is. And, when I, and then a can of black, flat black, cheap spray paint. You don't need expensive spray paint for this. Cheap is actually better. Spray painted them black. Spray painted a couple of sheets. I, I usually do two sheets at a time on a small project. That way if I don't need to use it all, all I can save some. And you could do this, you don't have to do black. You could do gray or brown. I do recommend you paint this, the sandpaper. There's a couple of reasons for that. I know you can get black sandpaper. I don't use that because it's really, really super fine grade and it doesn't look in scale to me. I don't like that look. Also, I'm, I have found that the spray paint seals the sand on the sandpaper. Sandpaper, if you get it wet, like to clean it, this sand will come off. I've had it happen. So far on the structures I've painted with the spray paint, that hasn't happened. So it seals it in a lot better so it makes it easier to, to uh, clean later. And I marked the back similar to this one. I marked in one inch squares and then I cut one inch strips off and I marked another mark about a half inch up and then every inch I cut, so I've got, these are about a halfway up little pieces. And that way it kind of looks like the shingles on a real house. You can kind of see it better from the back than the front. But that way you've got, you've got shingles. So let me get the building up here and we can start talking about what I've had to do to prep it. Alright, when I do a roof, I always start on the front and I do the whole front. 
And incidentally, at the end of the video, I will tell you how many sheets of sandpaper it took to do the roof this size. That'll give you kind of a clue as to how much you'll need for your structure. So I've actually, I already drew, remember when we, before we put the roof on, we drew lines every inch. Well, I've added another line in between each of those, so I've actually got lines every half inch up the roof. So that will tell me where to put my um, roof pieces. And I know these are hard to see. The ones I drew originally with a regular pencil have pretty much disappeared for the camera. That's why I went through with a colored pencil. And that's another hint. If, you, if you're working on black, a colored pencil shows up a lot better. So the first row, I actually want, on each piece of sandpaper, there were a couple of, there was a strip that was not quite a whole inch wide, and I'm, I'm going to actually glue that right at the bottom, just to cover it up, that way we don't have roof showing through that first row. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue, and this is just our, our normal, what I use, the Fast Grab Tacky. I'm going to put just a line all the way across, and I'm going to line this up with my roof edge. And this first row, I want to actually clip down with some clothespins, because I want this row to glue on, and I'm going to turn this around. After I get off the camera, I'm going to turn around and make sure I've got everything straight, because I really can't see what I'm doing from this angle. So if I'm making mistakes, you're seeing them before I am. Um, I'm going to cut this. Oh, where's my scissors? Well, there's a pair of scissors. Now this will ruin your scissors, so don't use a good pair of scissors to cut this. I actually cut the strips. I used my craft knife with the break-off blade and a straight edge on a mat. Uh, if you're going to use scissors, go to Dollar Tree and just buy a cheap pair of scissors to use with this because you will have to throw them away when you're done especially if you do very much roof because this will just will knock the edge of your scissors off so fast um, and I don't mind ruining a pair of scissors from Dollar Tree I don't like to ruin a pair of scissors I've paid more money for so when this is dry I'll cut off this piece needs to dry before we go on I'll cut it off even with the edge and then I'll be back Right, this is now dried on, dried and everything. So now we have, and I this was a, since this was a little narrower, that means my my first set of roof will sit up here. Now I've got I'm going to start with a full shingle at this side on this row, and I'm going to run a bead of glue right along there. There is a pencil line there, but it's, it's a regular pencil line, so it's a little bit harder to see. I have a full shingle on that end. And this row, I may, uh, I'm going to have to put some glue on the shingle too. On the other rows, I won't have to because they will be like a half inch of shingle against the roof, so it'll it'll stick a little better. This first row is always a little bit harder to get going. But if we don't put that row of not notched roofing on, every place there's a crack, our roof would show through, and we don't want that. It's all trimmed. I'm gonna t I'm gonna be clipping this down with some clothespins again, and when this dries, then we'll go on to the next row. All right. So the first row is dry, and now we need to start row number two. So always, when you're roofing, whether it's on a dollhouse or on a real house, you want to offset the 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 slices in your shingles by a half shingle. 
So I've cut this one in half. I cut off the half that was off here. So I'm starting with a half shingle on this side now. And now I'll just go across just like before. I'll lay my glue and I'm actually doing it a little different. I decided to give a little extra stability. I left my lid off my glue by accident. So now it's all clogged. There we go. So now we've got more glue to grab onto. So we don't have to put on the shingle. But I'm also going to put a couple of drops of super glue along here. That'll just speed things up. Because that makes for the instant bond again and then we can just move along a little faster. So we'll put that on. We line it up with the... And if you always start with full shingle on the end and then the next row has a half shingle, you will come out with your shingle space the way you're supposed to. And always butt when you have to join two together, butt them up to each other so that they and you can either cut this end off now or you can cut it off when you're all done. I like to cut them off one at a time. So now another row and this row all your odd rows, odd number rows, first row, third row, fifth row will be full shingle on the end and the even numbered rows will have a half shingle. But by putting that super glue on there, that will allow me to move along a little faster. So that's all there is to it. I'm going to continue and I'll get the rest of this side of the roof done and then I'll check back with you. All right, the entire front roof now is finished. Um, we've got a nice covering of shingles. If I decide to later, there's a few places where the black paint chipped off when I cut. I, depending on how much it shows later, I may touch up those areas with some black paint. Now we need yeah, I think I'll just turn this on its back and find it with the camera. Now we need to do the back roof. And the back roof is pretty narrow. We've just got these little spaces here until we get to the top. So first, I need to find my strip. I just had it. And I'm going to start over here. And remember, our first row is always just a piece of plain shingle. And then I'll have to see... How wide is this? Where's my ruler? Ah, my ruler disappeared. Oh, let's use a shingle. This is only a shingle wide. So, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to have to do some kind of fussy cutting. I want it to look normal. So what I'll do, I still want two rows on the bottom row. I still need two shingles there because otherwise the angle is wrong. And now, for my second row, I'm going to take some of these scraps, because there's always scraps that you cut off the ends. When you cut the ends of your shingles, the rows, you always have a lot of leftover little pieces. And save those as you go, because you're going to need them not only for here, but for the other, for the top. So I'm going to cut myself a piece now that's turned it upside down to get the right size. Second row will be a half. We'll have the match the shingle, so it's like a half shingle hanging off the edge. And I need to turn this straight side up so I can glue it on, and I'll show you when it's all done. All right, it's probably pretty hard to tell, but I have finished the roofing, alternating half shingles and full shingles. I had to do, cut each one of these on both sides individually because this space was only three fourths of an inch wide. So. That had to be cut individually. So let's see if I can get the camera angled. We're now going to deal with this area right here. And once again, we are going to use a piece that's not been notched. 
I'm going to turn the building around and glue this right here and I'll be right back. All right, so I've measured in. I'm not going to put roofing down on these corners. I don't think that's important. It'll be covered by the, um, by the plexiglass anyway. And I don't want to put too much, too much bulk down there. I did measure this and I figured out that I'm about at a half. Need to start this over on this, oops, on this corner. Sorry. At about a half shingle. So I'm going to glue this on and I'll be right back. All right. So that's all glued in. And I just cut a notch out of this piece of roofing that's going to go here. And I will do the same at this where this channel comes up when I get that glued on and this gets a little bit dried so we can work around it we will start the ridge treatment all right so this is all covered now so now it's time to start our ridge treatment and to cover the ridge because on a real house or on a miniature house you've got to cover up where the two where the front and the back roof come and what we do what I do on a miniature house with this roof is I've simply cut one inch squares of some of the leftover shingle material and I'm going to, glue, I've folded them in half and I'll just glue them here. It looks much, very much like the shingle treatment that they use on a real roof like this. So I'll do the first couple for the camera and then I will just start like that. And your paint will crack. Don't worry about that. You can, you've got a couple of choices. You can, if it really bothers you, you can go back and um, touch up your paint later. Or if it doesn't bother you, you can just leave it the way it is. Um, and I'll decide what I'm going to do with this one as I go. So you'll have to hold the first couple especially. In fact, I think I'm going to clip the first couple to get a good bond on that first one especially. won't be able to clip it after that, but at least I can get the first couple of them on there and held down. And I think I probably should have put some super glue, not just tacky glue on there. So I'm going to continue with this roof treat with this ridge treatment and I'll be back in just a minute. So the ridge cap is done. I told you I'd tell you how much I had left of the uh, material and I have... where did I lay that? just about one strip one inch wide by the width of the sandpaper this is how much I have left of the four sheets so it used just about four sheets even to do this size roof um, so that gives you kind of an idea how much it will take so after I pick all the glue off of my fingers I can start preparing for next week's video next week we will be attaching this to the baseboard that will be landscaped and we can start our landscaping.